Hey, middle school readers, Miss Heather, and I am here today with Words on Fire by Jennifer Nielsen. Jennifer Nielsen is a great author. In case you're not familiar with her, she has a few other books. If you're a fantasy lover, she definitely has some books you'll love. Check out Mark of the Thief or The False Prince. She also writes historical fiction novels, which is what Words on Fire is. This book in particular is about a young girl named Audra who lives with her family in Lithuania during a time when Russian soldiers have taken over the country. So Audra knows that everything in her country right now is really dangerous, but she also knows that her parents are doing something that might be illegal. She's not quite sure what they're doing, but she finds out when her family home is attacked one night and her parents send her on a mission to deliver a secret package. It ends up that her parents are part of a resistance movement and they are smuggling books to people who can't get them. So Audra not only realizes that she might have a chance to do something good for her country, but she realizes that she might have found a group of people who can help her rescue her parents from the Russians. So I'm going to read you the first couple of pages of Words on Fire and hopefully again you'll look for this on our e-services Hoopla, Overdrive, or Libby. Again, if you love audiobooks, check it out. Jennifer Nielsen is a great author on audio. So this is page one, chapter one of Words on Fire. My name is Audra. In my language, Lithuanian, it means storm. But my language had become illegal. If the soldiers we passed on the road heard us speaking it, we could be whipped on the spot or arrested. Or in some cases, we might just disappear. That happens sometimes. So I avoided saying my name in public, but I often wondered if my language was forbidden, then my name was forbidden, which meant I had no name, which left me perfectly free to do everything I could to defy the Russian occupiers. I redoubled my grip on the sack slung over my shoulder, braced myself against the wind coming at me and continued down the path. I'd come this far, no matter what was ahead, I could not stop now. I would not stop now. Too many lives depended on me, starting with those of my parents. My father was made of magic. Not real magic, of course. I knew magic wasn't real. But if it ever might have been, then it was inside my father's quick hands and lively voice. He was born with tricks and effects and a talent to share them with others, delighting audiences wherever he traveled. How I wished I could be more like him, bold and adventurous, always ready with a joke or a story. Instead, I was the girl who ducked into the shadows when we had visitors. The girl who watched life from afar, but rarely participated. The girl who wanted to be more than she was, but knew such a thing would be the kind of magic even my father couldn't achieve. Mama's magic was different. Since Papa's work took him away so often, she found ways to fill our home with the smells of fried sweet bread, with the music she sang as we worked the garden, and with her tender goodnight kisses on my cheek. Those times were special, but nothing replaced the moments when we were all together. I loved to sit at Papa's feet by the fire, watching him prepare for his shows, letting him test his tricks on me to see if I could guess the secrets. By now, I could, of course. I'd seen every trick a hundred times and I could do many of them myself, but never in public, never like him. You can be like him in other ways, Mama often said on the nights Papa was gone. Be happy like him, be smart like him, but do not travel like him. That's not for you. I had no wish for that either. Lithuania was a dangerous place to live. My parents had often explained that as their reason for keeping me on our little farm. Our country was occupied by Cossack soldiers from Russia, the empire that claimed Lithuania as its own. Lithuanians disagreed, of course, but we were a small country of farmers and simple peasant folk. What were we supposed to do against such a vast empire? We're supposed to keep our heads down and obey their laws, Mama said whenever my father broached the question. Then she'd steal a glance at me, for Audra's sake. All of this is for Audra's sake, was always Papa's answer. Those conversations continued late into the night, long after they thought I was asleep, and those were the moments when I realized that something about my father's work had begun to make Mama nervous. Has this gone too far, she whispered? Have we risked too much? It wasn't the first time she'd asked that question, but lately, Papa was taking longer to answer. On this night, he finally replied, everything is fine, my love. This work is more important now than ever. Then his work wasn't magic shows, not really. My father must have been involved in something more serious when he traveled, something that made Mama anxious. Then she offered another question. Do you think Audra suspects something? If I did, then that was all I had, a suspicion of something. And Papa's assurance that I didn't know what they were doing began to feel like an itch I couldn't scratch. I needed answers. 
I hope you'll look for Words on Fire on Hoopla, Overdrive, or Libby, and that you'll continue Audra's journey with her. Keep reading, and we'll see you soon.